All right, guys. Today, we have a Power Smart 1500 generator. Now, as all these generators nowadays, their upward claim, just ignore. So this one here says 1500 watt, but it having a 56 cc motor in it, I would say 1200. Um, pretty much all the generators. I don't care. You buy 12, it says 12,000 watt and, and then it shows 8,000 watts underneath it. Base your buying power on that. So this one here is a, basically a 1200 watt generator and it's an inverter generator. So this one, what it does is it produces a DC current that is then brought over into an inverter circuit, just like a standard inverter, but it's pretty stripped down because it don't need a whole lot of the other stuff like transformers. And gave me a generator this year so I bought him one for Christmas and it's an inverter generator too so it's really cool but I figured it would be nice to give it to him isn't that then nice you get to learn what's inside isn't that nice it's because I'm the greatest daughter ever oh lord that's <laughs> truth all right so this was my Christmas gift what do you buy a guy that makes power a power smart a power smart. <laughs> so, Kira Marie thought it was what? A wonderful idea. A wonderful idea. And um, she's going to go ahead and open this up. There's a knife over there, dear. So, I uh, it, look at this picture right here. I'll click to it real quick. Okay, back to here. She's opening this thing up. This is a power smart. It is an inverter generator. And typically, um, they'll show you these, you know, outrageous watts. And I just want to be straight with you guys. Anything that says 1500 watt made in China, um, you know, it, it's it, that would be the, the, just don't go beyond that. Um, the little generator I gave her says 1500, but it says also it says 1250. Base all your loads on the lower end of that and you'll be fine. These will last a very long time. Now, the champion generator she's got was an old light power plant, correct, dear? Yeah, I think that was what it That we used to rent them out. And so she has that one, and she's restoring that one. It's one we saved. We sold all the rest in an auction, and we saved it. So mm. this one here is a pretty little generator. Yes, it is. And you grab one side, Kira, and I'll grab the other side, and we will put it down here on the floor so you can lift it out. Okay. So this thing only weighs about 25 pounds and she has no problems whatsoever with that. So let's get whatever materials are left in here. What's left in here? Nothing. So oh, there's a tool kit. There's a little tool kit with it and the handle. Okay. So let's go ahead and get it put up here at the top. This thing is small. Let me get, um, there's a video I'm putting out or I put out right before this and It'll give you a comparison here. Here, turn around, Kira Marie. Comparison to its size. Look at that little thing. The, the, the generator. The generator. <laughs> Look at that. That right there is tiny. Look at it. It is a little bitty thing, and you can see by the size of the plugs. But this is an inverter generator. So now, people don't tell you often what an inverter generator is. An inverter generator basically uses a... A DC drive alternator type setup okay so it's a permanent magnet alternator in it or it could be an excited coil alternator in it and then what it does instead of just making a direct based on RPM 60 Hertz it has a small inverter in it so let me snatch up a uh, a little inverter right quick we're gonna do a little play on the scenario here oh guys look at that that's Riley so that tells you how prepared I am. I've been going off the video chain for a while. Inside of these generators is basically two separate sets of components. So instead of an AVR and some kind of a basic uh, voltage control and a standard power head with an excited uh, uh, coil set inside, um, rotor inside, these generators use basically a small DC producing power plant that's then converted into the AC voltage and it allows the generator to ramp up its abilities as needed. That's why everybody says the inverter generators are better. And of course, if you have a problem with one, you really got a problem because they're difficult to fix too. 
However, this one came very well, um, very well recommended, and she decided on this model right here. So we're going to go through the process of showing y'all some of the some of the basics. Try to turn it here. Some of the basics of how this thing's made, and I'm going to take the covers off of it, and we're going to look inside and see how this thing is built. So stay tuned. Don't disappear. All right. Now, here's its basic specs. Rated output, 1,000 watts. That's one kilowatt. Starting watts. So, in other words, it'll surge to 1,500. Now, that's pretty common. If you have a deep freezer and a refrigerator and your computer, you can keep everything running. Generally, no problems. This will do it, and this will run an extremely long time on nothing more than about three-quarters of a gallon of gas. That's worth it. The second thing is, is they're very quiet. And this one here is going to be very quiet. Its decibels are in the low 60s, so it's very quiet to run these. I've done a little bit of research on it, and these are about 300 bucks. But as far as their durability, with the 53cc um, Honda engine, or I think, I think it's actually a Yamaha engine that they cloned. It is a clone. Um, for that, it's going to be a very good little unit. So now, I'm going to let her hold the camera here. And we're going to go through all the basics on it. it. has a fuel on and off. has a choke for the carburetor right there. And oh, I'm sorry, here it is. Uh, and these and these are the USB ports. So it has USB ports output. And it also has in here, see if I can get this open. This is brand new, so we're not. It's going to be a little bit yeah, tight. A little bit tight. So there we go. And here comes the air filter right there. This is the intake. There's the fuel. The carburetor system is right up here in, underneath the gas tank. And there's the pull starter right there. Pretty simple, pretty easy. And cute. And, you know, a lot of people will pay $150 for these little two-cycle, but this is not two-cycle. This is a four-cycle. So you do have oil to change. You do have all the basic service things that you have to do. And over here, let's see where that, I think this thing pops off. I'm not positive, but... We're learning as you're learning, so, or it has, sorry, it has the screw covers over here. So we're learning as you're learning and doing all of this at the same time to investigate this little machine right here, okay? So I will get in here. The correct word would be winging it. We're winging it, guys. So um, it's been a long time since I've done some videos, and a lot of people are like, where in the hell you been, man? Um, surviving. <laughs> Uh, that's about as good as it gets. In fact, here, hold on. Let me grab this over here. You stay there, Kara. Okay. And I'm going to grab this little uh, this little impact. This impact's in the previous video I just did. And um, you get to see this thing in action here. So we'll take it open. I think it's got holders. No, the screws come out. So we will take this thing open and we're going to take a better look at it on the inside. Okay. Have to figure out how to get in here and we'll do that as slowly and safely as we possibly can. Okay. So there is the, uh, the pull cord. There's the oil. You put the oil in right there. So there's four screws you take out. And I'm pretty sure this thing didn't come with any oil. And it is a one of those strange, weird clamshell engine. So it just has just a touch right there on the on the stick. In other words, basically no oil. Um, but we're going to go ahead and get this thing filled up. And here inside, focus over there. Here inside is the inverter side of this. So the generator part is in here, and it's small. It's like a little compact little rotor about the size of a clutch for a go kart, maybe just a hair bigger. Looks similar to it. And that is the uh, that is what's inside of this thing. It's really a unique build. Now, the way that they drain the oil of these things, let me close this off and I'll show you here. The way that they drain the oil is you see that, that pour spout right there on the side of the oil? That's literally how you drain the oil is by turning this on its side. And so let me get this light on for them here. Um, where is it at here? There's a torch right there. Right there. Turn it on. All right, now she's going to film inside, and you can see the stuff right here. 
where it shows you some of the details of that. And I will go over here. Let's take the crap out of the way. <laughs> Pull the uh, screws out of the other side. And I'll tell you what, this little scans. They do. The Chinese seem to be coming up with the dumbest freaking names for tools, but the quality is getting better. This little scans is a really good little brushless. So here we get the other side off. Here we'll go ahead and start to spin it. Ooh, take the screws. And here we go. And we'll spin it around. Now, how this thing is built, how this thing is built, y'all was showing y'all the carburetor being under this side here. You see where the fuel is. Um, this little carburetor is the same basic carburetor that goes on the little Champion 1200s. So you're, you've got a 80cc engine's carburetor, technically, with a 53cc motor. So it doesn't have to pull as hard, and it also makes all the power you need. This thing is literally, I, I think it's a, a, a 2.15 horsepower. So you take 746 watts per horsepower, and it gives you their little ceiling of 1500. That's, that's just what they're working with. But of course, being an inverter, it does require just a hair less horsepower to, to balance out. The inverter has the capacity of up its, upping its output. So we're going to uh, um, get this thing oiled up, get the oil in it, and get everything ready to fire up. And then we're going to do a voltage quality test. And the voltage quality test will be involving a, a uh, oscilloscope. And we'll do a draw test on it also. That will involve a 800 and a little over 800 watt load on this quartz heating unit. So, um, might even plug something else in it to try to get it up over a thousand. But like I said, you just seen it. It said one kilowatt. It'll only put a thousand out and it does have an extra starting capacity. So one of the benefits of the extra starting capacity is just simply for like your refrigerator or your freezer. But if you have a storm, Nothing, nothing is better than having at least something this simple and something this small that you can use everywhere. So you people want to have the really big generators because they want to run everything they got. But stuff has gotten so efficient now that you can literally get away with this instead of a 2500 on a lot of your stuff. The main thing you must be concerned about in your home is your freezer and your refrigerator. And this would handle both. So there's no problem there. And you can put it in your car. And you can set it down in your car. And instead of even carrying gas with you, you can pretty much throw it in the floorboard, run to the gas station, and fill it up. Yep. So, you know, not a terrible scenario, in other words. 25 pounds is nothing when you think about it. All right, so she's going to get the handle on, and I'm going to get the oil in. And it should be a pretty simple, easy setup. And we're going to get this thing outside, fire it up, and let you see what it can do. So far, so good. All right, I had this little filter cover put back on. And as far as filter medium, this over here just uses standard half inch thick. You can buy it everywhere, filter medium. In fact, probably some duck brand refrigeration stuff will cover it and work fine if you need it. A lot of easy to deal with stuff in here. Look at this thing. Ain't that something? It's the whole thing in there. It's amazing. It's pretty. It's pretty. And Kara got this for like what, 280, 290? I think so. Uh, yeah, on her credit card. Because I'm a grown up. Because hers a grown up. <laughs> I'll get over it. So, all right, we'll be back in just a little bit. Y'all stick around. Don't go. No, we're, we're, we're going to be on there. Stay. All right, so we brought it outside. We've got oil and gas in it, and it doesn't take a whole lot of gas, believe it or not. And this thing here is kind of unique. We have the the oscilloscope set up, we have the watt meter set up, we have a 4 and 800 watt, so 800 watt max. I think this is about a 100 watt fan, and then about 230 watt uh, LED lights that'll pull about 60, 65 watts. So what we're going to do is we're going to fire this thing up, and you're going to see that it has about an 8 to 900, maybe 1,000 idle on it. Most generators have to run at 3,600 RPMs to get to 60 hertz. But these do not have to do that. That's why they don't require so much gas. All right. And cost of gas today, big deal. So if you just need your refrigerator to run, it doesn't sit there running at 3,600 RPMs like a standard generator. It idles down to nothing. 
your refrigerator calls for power, it idles up, produces the power, and then when your refrigerator will cycle, this will shut back off. So this is, this may be a hundred dollars more than an equivalent, but it'll save you that in gasoline. It's just amazing difference in outcome. Now, I do not care for the first generation inverter generators because they were literally, as you see in the beginning of the video, a freaking inverter and an alternator generator set up, and they were terrible. The new ones, the last six or seven years have been very good. This one is a much improved model. So, Kira's going to go ahead and fire this thing up, and the steps are turn on the power switch, turn on the fuel, which she's got the fuel on now. Yep, turn on the fuel, pull the choke out, and then she's going to give it a little pull. Okay. I thought the starter might be bad. All right, so it gives a little rev up because there's a little gas from the choke. Now, we're going to look at the voltage. And you're going to take a nice clean look. See that right there? Now that's 50 volt scale. We have 120 volts and currently no watts. No watts are traveling through it. And the Hertz is 59.960. Similar with our readings we're getting over here. All right, so now the first thing we're going to do is she's going to turn on. The first thing we're going to do is she's going to turn on these two lights. Go ahead. And you'll notice that there's no draw on this generator. The generator is not staging itself up, okay? Look back over here, it's pulling 60, 64 watts of power right now. And the generator is still at idle, so this is telling you, that these will light your yard up, these will light up your house without having this having to burn much fuel compared to a regular generator. A regular generator, just to burn those two lights, will be running extremely loud and very fast. Now, you're going to see the difference. She's going to kick this on, which there's a 400 and an 800. She's going to put it on the 400. And listen. You hear it speed up? So it just sped up a little bit. Now we're pulling 400 and 470 watts of power. Voltage, very, very clean. Idle is up about to the halfway point, so it's idling at about 15 to 1800 RPMs right now. And now she's going to kick it up to the 800. And now you can see with the 800, it's still only running at about 2600 RPMs. These are not required to run three, four thousand RPMs to do their job. So it saves a lot of gas. And you can see here, elements and she's pulling 844 watts okay I should probably put this over here to hold this old plug in all right now Kira's gonna power up the fan now and was it on it's on low yeah. all the way up okay so now, 919 watts. So we have starting of the fan motor, we have the heavy, heavy load of the, of the quartz right here. Standard easy load of these. Now watch, when she turns this 800 watt load off, she's gonna turn it off, and you hear that thing calm down. So now it's calmed down. You see here, my oscilloscope timed out. We're sitting at 143 watts. Now that's about the average refrigerator's run. It'll hit at about 600 and then drop down to about that to run. And then we're going to get here, put that on auto set. Still very clean, very low RPMs and very clean power. So this is what you want to use. You can still have plenty of power with everything I was running to run your laptop, to run a TV, and that's about it, but you can still get all of this off of one of these small inverter generators. And the Power Smart, using the basically the Yamaha technology, they're really good. So, guys, y'all be good. I hope y'all can see that. And this is a Chawini that showed up in our yard, and she's still freaking here six months later. Right, Kara? Yeah. Kara claimed her. Yeah, anybody want a Chawini? All right, y'all be good. We'll see y'all on the rerun.
Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. See?